Hello and welcome to Zenata Consulting's beginner series. Today we're going to be talking about Zoho Desk and we're going to cover actually how you get tickets in to your Zoho Desk implementation. I'm Brett Martin. I'm here with Tyler Colt. Let's get right to it. All right, so Tyler, in order to set this up, there's several ways to get it in. I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the settings button up top and then over on the channel section, here's how you're going to get tickets in. Today we're just really going to talk about email and uh, chat and web forms as kind of the main ways of going ahead and getting tickets into your Zoho desk. So let's start with email. That's the one that uh, most people use. And I think that's the biggest one. Yeah. And so the way that uh, email tickets work inside of Zoho desk is that Zoho desk is going to generate a, you know, system defined support email address for your organization. And so we'll see, you know, it looks like support at, you know, our, our organization name dot Zoho desk.com. And your first reaction is probably going to be, well, I don't really want my customers to email that email address. I want them to email support at Zenata.com or support at, you know, your brand.com instead. And so what you can do with that is basically set up in your um, email client, whether you're in Gmail or Outlook or really any of the tools that uh, process email. You can set up a forwarding rule that forwards all email into your support inbox just directly to this email address. And each of those emails will just go ahead and create a ticket on behalf of the customer who sent it in. So they're not all gonna appear in the system like they came from your support inbox. It's basically just treated as a customer ticket. And you can have as many of these emails as you want. Maybe you want one, maybe you want to be very specific depending on the products. Maybe you wanted to say CRM support at Sonata.com. So you could then create another one for that. And uh, you could just go on and on and on and have all the various different emails. And then what you're going to do is you're basically going to have the aliases on your back end pointing to each one of these very long support email addresses that are there. And you give it a friendly name as well. So you know exactly what it is. So that when, you know, this is our CRM support channel, this is our desk support channel, this is our sales IQ support channel. So if you wanted to go be that granular, you have that ability to do that. And then, of course, the other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set that from address back up because since it's just being forwarded in, you want to make sure that whatever from address you've added is going to be kind of a natural from address so that uh, it's actually going to be coming from your organization and not from this long internal Zoho uh, email address. Exactly. And so really all you need to do here is, you know, you'd put in your support email address and give it a name. So maybe our friendly name is not a support. And what this will do when you save it is it'll just send a little email to this address with a code. And then we just have to bring that code back here and go ahead and enter it in. So a code will have just hit this inbox here. And once I get it, I can just go ahead and verify this address with that link. And one of the other things, if you don't want this to go through Zenata's servers, one of the other settings that sat there is the ability to use your own SMTP server. So if we go ahead and we edit this real quick, you'll notice that setting. If you click that, it's going to allow you to put in your very specific. So it actually will go through your servers, not use Zoho service at all. It cuts down on spam a little bit. There's a lot of things you can do. We've got DKIM authentication and other things. There's, there's things you can do to prevent spam going out. But if you really want to avoid it, use your own SMTP server for this. So if you're using Gmail, you would just put in basically smtp.gmail.com, your username, your password, the uh, server name, the port, all that down at the bottom. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's really straight, really, really straightforward and a nice way of ensuring that your tickets get sent out properly. So that's email. I mean, really not much more other than, uh, yeah, I guess we maybe DKIM, we'll talk about that a little bit, Tyler. Yeah, it's just one little minor thing to note. So when you're setting up that from address, again, just to help prevent spam, you'll want to get a DKIM record authenticated. Now it's not identifying any domains in our system here as we don't have one validated, but these will just be, you know, basically a little text record that you add wherever you manage your domain that basically just tells a recipient of this email that you're allowed to use that domain as a sender. All right. And I think the next way most people are going to get tickets into the system is probably going to be web forms. And yep. so if you look at web forms, Zoho actually has web forms built directly into 
Zoho Desk, which is great. And so you can go ahead and create an advanced web form. We'll just go ahead and take a look at that now. And so these are basically forms that are just ready to be embedded on your site. And when you pull up this page, you know, the fields that are required are just going to automatically, you know, come over to this side of the page. And then basically what we're able to do is customize what type of information we want to collect. And we'll notice that this is kind of pulling from both contacts and your ticket information, right? So I can say I need, you know, first, last, maybe I want to go ahead and make our first name required. And I definitely want the email and the subject of the ticket. And maybe I also want to get the description. You know, I might need a little more information than just a subject uh, in order to begin work on this ticket. <clears throat> a couple things you can also do under some of the advanced settings is allow the user to upload an attachment or put a CAPTCHA on the form to try to prevent some of uh, you know, the bot traffic that you'll definitely see. I would highly recommend using a CAPTCHA um, if you don't, you will get bot submissions coming in on pretty much any form on your website. So it's a good practice to have, and you can just drag and drop one directly into the form. So now that you've clicked next, you basically have to put the form details in. What do you want this form to be called? You give it a very specific name. Uh, maybe this is very, you know, a specific department. Maybe it's just general support inquiries. You can be very specific about that. Then you're going to want to actually put your domain names in. So uh, let's go ahead and just put Zanata in here as well. So you put your domain in, you can put your return URL. Maybe you wanted your return URL to be something more specific, like thank you whatever. That way it's going to take them to a thank you page. And then you can assign this. So you can assign it to a group. You can assign it to an individual. So in this case, we're going to assign it to an owner, Zanata. Um, but again, on the form name, and if you think about this, you can have several different forms. So this could be if you have certain people that are handling certain tickets, like warranty, like Tyler put in, maybe Zanata is the person that handles that specifically. So you want to assign it specifically to them. Then you can have a uh, thank you message, and then you go ahead and hit save, and it's going to give you some code code that you can then embed on your website. So give this to your webmaster, copy it and uh, give it to them and they'll clean that up and make it look pretty and they can uh, put it on your website. Additionally, not here, but if you want to get information into uh, Zoho Desk using web forms, you can also go to Zoho Forms and it has, I personally think, better integration with Zoho Desk and a lot more flexibility on how you customize your forms, the information you're collecting, the ability to have it go to the information go to several different places at once. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can do with it. One of the downsides is though with Zoho Forms is that attachments won't write back into Zoho Desk if you're using Zoho Forms. So you'll, if you need attachments, you're actually gonna have to use the advanced web form inside here of Zoho Desk. Then I think the other most common way that we will see people get tickets into Zoho Desk is through chat. And you have that ability directly inside of Zoho Desk. Now this is uh, basically sales IQ chat. Um, so if you have, you know, sales IQ, you can uh, do it from there as well. But a lot of people just have Zoho Desk, they don't have sales IQ. So you can go ahead and embed this script directly into your website. It's going to give you a nice little chat box that's going to appear on your website. And then you can have all of those chats actually go into tickets. And you can also associate and do other things with it. Anything we really would might want to point out here, Tyler, on the chat settings? Yeah, one of the one of the settings here is that, you know, by default, if you ever miss a chat, it's going to come in and write itself in as a ticket for you to respond to via email later. But you can actually associate specific agents to, you know, basically allow them to receive the live chats. So if you have some people that, you know, that might be part of their job, but other people it really just isn't, then you can say, hey, only actually notify these three users when a chat comes through. If none of them are available, someone will follow up via email, you know, just through the traditional ticketing system. Yeah, and all the advanced settings are actually directly configured inside of Sales IQ. So if you just have a Zoho Desk license, you might want to consider also getting a Sales IQ license. It adds a lot more power and a lot more flexibility to this chat window. If you're uh, confused and you've got an older version of Desk, it was a, a while ago, Zoho Desk used to have its own chat widget, and that's kind of changed now. So mm -hmm. it's all built in with uh, all built in with Sales IQ. Extremely powerful. 
anyway, I think those are really the top three ways to get uh, your tickets into your into your Zoho Desk instance. We hope you found this helpful. Please go ahead and click that subscribe button and we'll see you soon.